Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Era Podcast. I'm your host, Ms. Kev on stage, and I'm joined by my husband and co-host. The Kev on stage. And if you listened to the episode last week, which a lot of people actually really enjoyed and was like low-key crying. Yeah, like, because people be wanting to cry. Uh, Enough. Yeah, we found it. I don't know. Anyway, I thought um, it's one a sweet episode, actually. I kind of really enjoyed it. But we... Um, <coughs> At that vid? I sure hope not. Um, but we talked about today, we were supposed to have Adrian and Israel on, Adrian Israel Houghton on to the podcast today. And unfortunately, they're not here today. So uh, what we're going to do is this will be the last um, episode of the year. We're going to take a break the last two weeks of the year, actually for all podcasts on like the Kevin Station Network. Oh, I thought you had something to say. Uh, and so we will be taking a break. So this will be the last one of <laughs> the that, year. That's the second smoke. But I, that's what it is. I Thank just, you. We'll just put my cig out. For all of you who are listening to today's episode and not watching, Kevin is in a full on red Listen, robe. I got this robe from a fake cigarette. From my, it's a real cigarette. It's just no smoking. I or got nicotine. this robe. No, nor is it actually anything but plastic. <laughs> I got this robe for this Forever Mood Kevy Moto video, and it's actually really comfortable. <laughs> and I don't be wearing robes like that. No, I think you got that before you knew about Forever Mood. No. Yes. It's I what, wouldn't just order a bath yeah, robe and red. There we go. No, the robe was for Forever Mood. The cigarette. Oh, cigarettes. I just saw them at party. Season. Exactly. This is just the foolishness. I that thought you'd throw them away, actually. No, they're back there. All that All right. stuff that I bought I'm that day is back now. there. Is that the same cigarette you just put out that you smoked again and then put back out? No, it's a different different one. (laughs) So what we're going to do is talk about some of the uh, moments from the podcast and honestly, just some of the moments from the year. And one of the first moments of the year, and it's simultaneously crossed with a world moment i actually would say but also we were filming the podcast no come on you have to start deal? It, it would be disrespectful to do this and not mention it oh, God. it would be it's it's what did uh it was all Roy, downhill from this moment it was so he said any bliss without this is incomplete correct and i think that's on my hair too but that would be yes clarice is watching live shout out to you and that would be kobe bryant Kobe Bryant died on January 26th, and it's just a day. And listen, I loved Whitney Houston, and I know about when she died, but I do not know the exact date. Actually, I think I do know the exact date. I think it's April 8th, but y'all can fact check me. Um, But I mentioned it, number one, because it's at the beginning of the year. It's in January. That feels like years ago. It feels so long ago. But also, we were quite literally filming the love hour hour. Mm -hmm. during that time it was on a sunday 12 12 thank you divinity as i said uh april 8th i was like i actually think it's the 12th but i've already said i thought it was 12 too i was i remember we had a show that i had a show that day oh it was in february oh that's right it is february it was near valentine's day we had i was doing a valentine's day show in quarterly in idaho there we go it is february okay so i don't know it by heart and all the more speaks to the point that um I don't think we were in Idaho. We, we were, were at that conference in. Um, Trust me, we'll say. it was in Idaho. Yes. I thought it was. In, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the point is that that is a moment that we shared with our audience because we were doing it live as well. Mm-hmm. We were doing a live version of the Love Hour, and uh, we were talking about whatever. I don't even remember. And uh, our son, Isaiah, texted us that Kobe Bryant died and Kevin like audibly gasped. Yep. And we were like, what? What happened? And you were like, Kobe Bryant died. And I think Actually, by, I thought Isaiah didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. And I think even Joshua by this time had started receiving text messages. Mm-hmm. So we like literally stopped it, like what we were doing and pulled out our phones and like waited for the news to kind of unfold in real time. And then we were just like, we cannot continue. Yeah. And then we didn't finish the episode. We came back and finished it later. Has to wait. And it was her daughter. Was Zay Zay's age. Yeah. And that was just like, okay, it, bye. Yeah. 
uh, and it was just, I don't know. It's one of my, uh, Kevin's brother is in, actually he left this morning. So he was at the house yesterday and we were actually talking about, uh, Kobe. we were talking about the year and talking about Kobe. And, um, I was telling him that for, uh, I did check TMZ. That's right. That, um, for whatever reason, you know, I'm 37. So that's like a lot of life not a lot, but a lot of life in which, you know, celebrities and people of notability, sure, die, you know, every year there's a group of people, you know what I mean, that pass. And some are quite memorable and for whatever reason, some that I'm like huge fans of. Yeah. And for whatever reason, Kobe's death was very triggering for me. It's a death that I remember. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because of the, the humanity of being a father and doing what we call the equivalent of a carpool granted yeah. to, to his, yeah, it's lifestyle. a carpool at, you know, yeah. a level of money that I know nothing of. I mean, you're taking a private plane or a helicopter from one side of California to the other. Listen, these are things I know nothing about. But essentially what it boils down to is a carpool, yeah. you know, it's taking the team and your, your daughter's teammates to a game. Man. That's all it really is. And so for it to happen in that way, I don't know, it was just something. And then this man had finished his career. So you think he's in full blown like fatherhood mode and trying to be present as a a husband and as a father and then they just had this little baby girl it was just all the things at once it's a lot man it was a lot man. yeah it was a lot that was yeah it, was, it down to the point where um after this happened you know there's that period of time between uh Kobe's death, January 26th, and then they did his funeral on February 8th? No, oh, February 24th. February 24th. I was like, what yeah, number was it? I couldn't remember. Yeah. Okay, so on 224, so there's basically about a month's time, yeah. and then a couple weeks before COVID is like, for real, for real. So during that month's time, Josiah, my youngest son, plays soccer, and we go out that way to attend some of his oh, games. God. And I would see those, now, of course, I don't know which one right. it is, but seeing those mountains as you're traveling, it, it's, very, it's a very eerie experience to know that someone, you know, families were forever changed as a result of this. I don't know. It was something sobering about it. It's something um, triggering about it. It's like kind of, it's sad. It feels very solemn walk or like driving through that area. I don't know. It was just a triggering moment. Yeah, I, um, it was the worst. It was. It was just the absolute worst. It was just, and it was, a, you know, like, a, a lot of families lost loved ones. Yes. You know, super tragic, super, um, it just sucked, man. It was, it just sucked. It sucked. And, and that's when we were getting kicked out of the racism office too. It that was. also happened this year. Yeah. That also happened this year. I that mean, was our was, last month in the racism office. <clears throat> it was. <clears throat> um, what's so funny is that, I mean, we can go there right now is when you think about is that on the list, uh, the racism office. No, but we can talk about it. Um, when I think about some of the biggest moments that we've had this year, some have been quite literally live in real time with our audience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a huge, like bonding experience to experience those. Like some people are in the comments, like, I remember that I was in the comments. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. Melissa checking TMZ. I remember, yeah. you know, Joshua or whatever, you know, that you remember from that moment. That's something that like that story and that moment will be forever tied together. I feel like 2020, I, I've said this a lot of different times, a lot of different ways. There's a lot of years that aren't that memorable in like grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we graduated in college 2005, Zay was born 2006, Joe 2008, 2009? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 2003? Yeah. I don't like, I know I was in college, but 2020 for all it's worth, I will never. Yeah, you won't forget it. Forget. I mean, so many moments 
so many things, even in our personal life outside of the pandemic, you know, happened in this year. So I'll be like, I'm going to be 70 years old. Like, oh, no, I remember 2020. 2020. I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah. I will, I want 20. I remember uh, during September 11th, I remember thinking, man, I wonder how long it'll be before I don't think about this. Mm. Like, because when that first happened, it was it was on our mind all the time. Any all loud, the time. still to this day, low key. Yeah, it was it was it was it was <laughs> a funny story. I don't know if I ever told it on here. My brother was living full in sin at this time of his life, and he thought the rapture happened. He did, and he went to Greater Christ Temple, in Tacoma, <laughs> Tacoma, Washington, on G Street, on a Tuesday, I believe it was, mm -hmm. banging at the door of the church, and it's not funny, but it's hilarious. Wanted them to open up. Nobody was at the church, so he thought he got. It was like behind. literally, like I missed. I'm it. sorry, God. No, I missed. <laughs> we did it. We did it, John. You're gonna be the next rapture of the United States. That's so funny and so churchy he to like, like be thoroughly convinced that you missed the rapture. Millions didn't make it. But I am one of the ones who got left behind. Yeah, but if, yeah. so that was definitely a moment. And then, and then when it, it wasn't the rapture, he was like, oh, okay, well. Back no, he saved. got saved. He got saved. For, he got he got trauma saved. No, Jay started attending Greater Love after that and was like, hasn't no, gone. No, but he was still sinning, though. He was just coming back. Uh, the next thing that happened was obviously the rest, racism office. That is the First of all. I drove by there the other day, did and you? I did this. The funny I was going thing, down to the office, to our regular office, to drop some boxes off in the dumpster. And I happened to be going down that street because I went to Chick-fil-A. That's why I got me an egg white grill. I was like, I'll just keep going down. And then I saw the races off and, and I was like, and it just looks more raggedy now. I mean, it really was a low key, a raggedy office. It was raggedy but, to begin with, but when we was up there, it was clean. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Us. It was, you know, looking back on it now, you'd be like, oh, that thing was that raggedy. But in the moment, we was like, there's you're you're there was a sense of pride of like this is our space. We decorated it really we, nice. We kept it together. We put so much money into. Oh, I know that makes me mad. But office. like it was, you know, it was. We a thought great, it was gonna be there forever. It was a great. It was a great space. I, you know, yeah. I almost wanted to say starter space, but you didn't know at the in the moment we that it was just gonna be like, a starter space. List. Do we really want to pay? For I a know. Space? But merch and the shooting at our house was getting overwhelming, and um, and we had planned on being there for a long time. Yeah, I but thought, racism prevails. Yeah, uh, I think by the end, what's so funny is that the uh, downstairs neighbors—I don't know if that's what you call the people that are below you—but the downstairs neighbors, the racism guy, the landlord, so to speak, actually ended up kicking them out. Yeah, for racism. Yes, for for actually for because they were like calling; they were the ones calling the police on us. And oh in God, addition I they to kept his, calling the police on yeah, us, and the racism office. and that's why the wife was low-key being a jerk as well but really it was them the ones that were calling the police on us and i don't know if i told the story when i went downstairs you ain't tell it when you was being petty oh so this is tell what happened. Lisa don't be safe for just a little bit and then we okay so what happened was we were upstairs filming uh one of your game night things and so yeah. there is you know oh, it was rambunctious yeah no but it's also like it. two o'clock yeah it was um uh, you know a good a good number of people in the office and so what they do is while we're filming, like, and actually at this point, we're not filming. We're actually uh, taking a break for lunch. So everyone's eating and, you know, like Heidi, Heidi's there. And if you know Heidi, she has a very pronounced mm -hmm. laugh, laugh yeah. voice. It, it carries, it's, you know, Heidi. And, and I love Heidi, but she, her voice is very like, you know, Heidi's in the room. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a bunch of like N words in there. And so, you know, we're, we're taking a break. We're eating lunch. We hear a knock on the door. And we just know this cannot be the cops. I just know this is not the cops. Open the door. Lo and behold, there are two police officers there. And they immediately know what's up. Like they're they're not about the shenanigans. They immediately know what's up. So they kind of peer through. They're like, we got a call, anything going on. And we're at the, I think we're playing like Jenga or like literally, trouble. We were literally playing Jenga. Yeah. And so we're like, we're trouble. 
I, it may have been trouble. I think it might have been trouble. Yeah. And so we're literally like, I mean, we're just in here. Yes, we're loud, but like, we're literally just in here playing trouble. Like, that's all that's happening. We're eating lunch. You know, here you can see this is the lunch. Trouble is down there. Like, that's what's happening. There's a bunch of us, but like, that's all that's going on. And he's like, okay, well, we just got complaints, whatever. So at this point, I'm pissed. I'm like, so you mean to tell me that someone is in this building right now? And instead of coming upstairs, knock, knock, knock. Hi, excuse me. Like I'm downstairs actually running a business in an office and you guys are like low key, really loud. Can you quiet down? Which in the moment you might be like, Err! but then after you close the door, you'd be like, yo, we got to be quiet. Like we're black in here. Like it's a whole entire office building and you guys are loud, like chill out. That's your right to like low key have that complaint. Like you, yes, you are correct. But you didn't even do that. You immediately called the cops. So I'm like, I'm going downstairs. So I go downstairs and I'm listening. For, this is so dumb, but I promise you I did this. Listening for like, is someone in this office? Is somebody in this office? Is somebody in this office? I get to like two or three offices in <clears throat> and I see the curtains ruffle. Because I'm like, oh, you must hear me like knocking on the door, trying to figure out what's going on. So I see the curtains ruffle and I'm like, I see you. And just so you know, we're nice people. So in the event that you have another issue, instead of calling the cops, what you can do is knock on the door. My name is Melissa and I'm always available upstairs if you want to knock on the door instead of calling the police. <laughs> now you yelling, we're nice people. First of all, we are nice. We are nice people. Don't get, you know what? First of all, I'm going to sock you out to prove to you how nice we are. Now we're not finna be nice. Could have been nice. Ooh. Now do you want something to eat? When I tell you, I was so mad. You didn't even notice I got your car. Oh, you driven your car in a while? I drove it. Yes, I did notice because the mat was in there. The, notice what? That it was washed. That I got your oil changed. Oh, I didn't even notice. I'm gonna go back in there and see. I ain't gonna notice. I was waiting for my secret. You got my oil changed. Oh, Hug or sex. Okay, when I go back out there, we go can go back start out over. there. We like, oh, let me give you some cooch. Okay, I'll, we can start over. Because um, remember what the last part I said. Did they? Did they change the? Yeah. Oil? Well, I did. And first of all, it's a lie. I thought that was. The new oil like told the engine. Oh no. You I, you now it's you, a mean, manual. you press the button. I said, yeah. well, I just do this and yeah. not get the oil changed. I just don't want to see it. I don't care if the oil's changed or not. He said you can clear it. I said, Y'all ain't been doing nothing but pressing buttons this whole time. I thought the new oil was like, oh, okay, I'm clean. I'm trying to remember if I did drive yesterday. You did, girl. Did, you right? I've been waiting. I've been like, okay, this is free time. Yeah. It was big as they said maintenance soon. No, it absolutely did. Jeez. No, it absolutely did. Uh, okay, I'm going to make sure I look. Okay, so anyway, yes, yeah, so that happened. And then this is the second part to that story. Because after that, we like pretty much was like, we're out of here. We're going to no, no, tell them what you did when you moved and you saw it. That's what I'm saying. The okay, second part to the story. No, so that happened first. And then after we moved out, <clears throat> and the guy ended up giving us our 100% deposit back. Um like he actually ended up doing. He actually work. was trying to get us to low key stay and no, not he sue absolutely, him. Yeah, he absolutely. But we was, was. like, nah. But you he racist. was like, that's the case, you know, hundred percent deposit because we had like put some work in. He was like, you don't have to take nothing out. You don't have to change nothing. Just vacate, and Just I'm gonna give you your money back, don't sue me. and everything will be straight. And so the day that we're moving stuff out and I'm just making sure that like, I didn't want to leave the, the office looking I crappy. Didn't Kev didn't care, but I'm like, let me at least I'll go in there and like the vacuum floor. and make sure the holes are out the wall. And like, you know, the stuff is taken down. Let me at least leave it in some type of nice way. <clears throat> and as I'm leaving, I see the downstairs neighbor moving their stuff out because the guy told us he had kicked them out. So I'm like, oh, so it's y'all. So I'm on the phone and what do I say? Was I talking to you or yeah, did I just you, yell you it? You were fake talking to me. You called me, but you said you talked to them so I could hear you talk to them. I said something like, I don't even remember. Girl, remember the story. I girl. know. I'm sorry, y'all, because I really do not remember. You were remember. like this. You were talking to me, but you're like, yeah, no, I'm just leaving. The people that call the cops on us are moving their stuff out. I wonder if they would have been able to stay up in here if they weren't acting something like that. Something like that, but it was literally like, uh, I see the people outside that call the police on us are also leaving. 
I guess that's karma. Like, you know, just being dumb. We're nice people. Like just being loud and dumb and like just do it and making sure like I walk past them like three or four times, like to make sure you hear me talking about you. And then when I drove off, I just stared like, you know, cause I wish I could flick people off, but I really don't in real life. Do this finger. I should, but like just letting you know, like I'm angry in like a Christian way. Um, so yeah, anyway, all of that happened. <laughs> and yeah, that's the story of the racism office, honestly. Oh my Did you God. have anything you wanted to add there? Just gonna forget them. Well, you know, after we left the racism office, we became, we upgraded. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in upgrades or another thing that can be upgraded are your bras, ladies. Yes. It's very important to have a bra that is supportive and comfortable and does all the things that you need a bra to do. And you can do that with Third, third Love. love. Give your breasts the comfort and support they deserve. Um, I am a third love bra wearer. I have completely. And I am a third love bra remover. <clears throat> I have completely overhauled all of my bras to third love, and that's not an exaggeration. That's true. Um, and I pay for those with my own Literally. money. They have everything from double A cups all the way up to I cups. They have their signature half cup sizes and bands from thirty to forty eight. You guys already know my favorite feature is that they come in all different shades of nude, which we've talked about because nude is not a color. Nude should be the color of your skin. I'm not sure what size to take. You can take the Third Love online Fit Finder quiz to find the size and styles that are right for you. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 10% off your first order. All you got to do is go to thirdlove.com slash love hour to find your perfect fitting bra and get 10% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash love hour for 10% off. Yeah. Listen, Gabby said that their love quiz is pretty darn accurate. Correct. Correct. All right. Anything else you wanted to add to the new office or to the old office? Well, the fact that we went from the racism office to the new office to a new office that we're taking possession of January 1st. And we're not even getting rid of our current office because... We signed a five-year lease. The craziest thing about it is because we got the new office in February, and then the pandemic happened in March. And it was like pretty soon after we moved in, we shot a couple of things in there. I remember we shot a whole bunch, like right when things were looking dicey. Yeah. And then it was like two months where we didn't even go in there. And I was I like, I feel like it was longer than that. It might have been three. Yeah, it was longer maybe than closer that. to four almost. Yeah, we just recently started going back, and now we're not back. Yeah, so I feel like yeah, now we're not back again. <laughs> People kept getting the bid, so you know it's a testament really to what God can do in a time where at the beginning of that time, beginning of the year, we we're paying a very small amount for an office and had continued had been planning on doing that for a long time. That went to a a huge jump. And then to get a bigger office, yeah. it's basically a soundstage with offices in in the same calendar year. Yeah, this is been, God's grace. It, it, this has been a very interesting year in terms of someone said exponential growth. And I would definitely agree that this has been a year of exponential growth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add mm -hmm. there? Uh, you talked about the pandemic. Do you want to go there more? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> along the same lines, it's like. Me and Tahir had just started touring. It was going amazing. I literally had just, the last two weekends had like, okay, now my set is in a great spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it takes you some time to get in a great spot. So it was in a great spot and we were still, we sold out literally almost every show. Like yeah. one, I'm gonna talk about every seat, maybe one or two shows, maybe five were light, yeah. but a lot of them were sold and oversold or like sold out, sold out. every every seat. So to go from that to zero shows to, you know, coming up with the idea for Keep Your Distance and that becoming lucrative. Yeah. Pretty, pretty lucrative mm -hmm. um, is like, God, you really are great. Because I remember I've said this before. I used to be, you know, I told you, I love stand up, but one of the things that sucks is it, it's a lot of travel. You're away from your family a lot. And I used to be like, man, if I had a private jet, I could come home, you know, 
right after the show. And now with Keep Your Distance, I literally can do stand up to more people than I could do at any venue that I could personally sell out. Even over the course of a whole tour. Yeah. And even with the fact, I'm talking about just tickets sold, Mm -hmm. not who actually ends up watching. Ends up watching, you know, either in the group or by nefarious means. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and I really don't think about it. I really think about the, the. the ticket sold. I was remember one of the tickets we had sold like fifteen thousand tickets, and Josh was like, "Do you realize that's how much the Staples Center's hold?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "No." And then I looked it up, and I was like, "Yes." Oh wow, that's crazy. So, uh, but you know, doing things my way, you know, so um, that was great, and and that put us in a position to to do what I want to do. I want to read this tweet because it's kind of like along the lines of what we're saying. Uh, It's about finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, Unique, she created Culture Tax. Mm -hmm. She tweeted this, and this I really agree with, and the app is along with the pandemic and keep your distance. She said, I don't think purpose is something we find. I think it's something we eventually recognize. I believe that too. A pattern, like a series of dots that has always been present that begin to make sense once we identify the constant, consistent thread that connects them all. And I remember I was talking about how... That's so true. Isn't it? Yeah. The app, for me, became about giving other people opportunities as much as it was creating for me. Yeah. And if I went back to Playmakers in Washington before YouTube, yeah. the thing we loved the most was giving actors, into, remember Tacoma, there was no yeah. productions going mm-hmm. on. Tyler Perry came into town with his actors mm-hmm. and they left. Right. You know, nobody else even came in town. David E. Tower or Chikaris Johnson didn't even come in town. And I realized I love to be able to give people opportunities, band, this, that, and the same thing that happened at All Death. And I realized, I never really realized that's what I like to do. But the app is going to give me the biggest Biggest opportunity opportunity. to do that for more creatives and directors and, you know, crew people, all that stuff. And that's why I'm more at peace with what I'm doing. And I'm at peace with people being like, well, Kevin ain't ain't saved because I know my purpose has always been there. Yeah. Um, And it's just manifesting now in a way that I didn't see fit. But if I can tell you right now that things were going good before the pandemic. I didn't know we would be having an app at the beginning of that year. Correct. When Jason, remember, we had a lot of conversations about that app. Yeah. Because it was a hefty price tag. Very. And me and Melissa had to really sit down and say, you know, because it wasn't like we had been planning for this. Like right. a conference, we'd been planning for that, you know. So, you know, Melissa was like, Are you, you know, because at that time we still weren't touring. Yeah. So we were like, if we were touring, it would be easy. But I kind of you know, felt like it was a, if you build it, they will come type of thing. Right. And to have the the response that we have so far off of something that was birthed during a pandemic. Like I remember when Jay called and I came yeah. home and told you it was still, I was walking around because yeah. the gym, gyms are still closed. But, um, and now it's going to be such an integral part of everything we're doing. I was actually thinking this morning, like I can't tour mm-hmm. next year. Mm-hmm. That's highly unlikely mm-hmm. because first of all, I'm touring every other weekend, yeah, essentially. And what we're building will be much more important than being in Tupelo, Mississippi for a weekend, right? So, in that way, and then as a father and husband, the pandemic allowed me more time with my family than I have had ever, mm-hmm. and that's even outside of touring, even just you working, me working, boys being in school no time this much. So a lot of me as a husband to work on a lot of things because it was present of mine. Melissa and I have spent a lot more time together than we are ever able to, even when we're on tour, because a lot of that is like travel time where you're like in the same place, but you're not really spending time together. So for that, I'm grateful that things worked out the way they did because it didn't, this year did not start off. Oh, it started off, but March, it was bleak. Uh, Yeah, it immediately went downhill in January and then just got worse. Yeah. In March. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the pandemic has been um, a lot of things for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, it, the pause has been necessary, I think, for humanity. Yeah. To be honest, just the slowdown, the pause the the uh, yesterday I did something with Angel and she was talking about checking in with herself. And I think a lot of us have had stopped and did a check-in, an internal Mm check-in. And I think that this that's what this year has been. Yeah. Um, You spoke of the Love Hour Conference. I thought that was another moment for 
um, for at least us personally, especially for me, because it was something that, um, you know, I planned for a long time and then it didn't come out the way that I did. And I've been saying the last couple of days that I have had to grieve. We had an episode on this as well, but I've had to grieve the way I imagined 2020 to be so that I could celebrate the way that it is. Yeah. And I think in trying to hold on to the plan, I haven't been able to fully celebrate what ended up being, which in some ways, and when I say some, I mean all the ways, is <laughs> um, far greater than any plan I, I had. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But in holding on to the plan, you don't, you're missing out on the moments that are truly moments of celebration. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times, it's like Melissa and I have talked a lot about scale. Like we, we love Shark Tank. And we, you know, this, this year was about scale in a lot of ways. And a lot of times what people in Shark Tank are doing, their business is going well. Right, right, right. But they can't, they can't go to another level. They can't meet the demand. They can't meet the demand under their current thing. So they have to take on a big investment. Absolutely. Which is hire employees. Where right. like, and we've experienced that with the merch. Like we were selling merch and Greg was one person. Yeah, he wasn't. And he was like, dude, like I cannot do. I can only yeah. humanly process like 80 orders a day. Y'all be selling two or three hundred. It's gonna take me right. a week. That's also part of the reason we got kicked out of the office because Greg was going in there at early morning and the lady was like, y'all coming in early night? Like, Girl, we done told, when we no, came in, we yeah. told you we was doing this. Yeah, she thought Greg was living there. I know, but I'm saying it's because he was coming in yeah, early yeah. and living late she, and she, there was a couch. Girl. But anyway, so getting, uh, uh, moving over our stuff through ShipStation to uh, our merch guy allowed us to outsource that, mm -hmm. even though it costs us more and our margins are less and we still basically charge the same, it was a necessary part of scale. Right. And the app and the office is the same thing. The first thing you got to do before the app even, they asked what color we wanted. Right. We paid that money for the whole year and it was not cheap. Oh no. Not cheap. So, and then with uh, the office, before we can even make, before the doggone, the, the money we save is amortized over years mm -hmm. of not paying location fees. But in, able to, in order to do that, we got to rent it, agree to do it for five years, put thousands of dollars into it to outfit it before we can even start saving money. Yeah. So the scale part is a lot of times you're going to put your bread in and then you're going to grow up because yeah. the subscribers, you know, the people we haven't we won't get paid for the app until the end of next month, even the first thing. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a complaint. It's just like when you scale something, you often have to put in capital that's going to take you some time to recoup. To, to recoup. Yeah. But if we didn't do that, we there's no other way to do it. Yeah. So I feel like scaling in a pandemic was was doubly scary. Yeah. Because the world around you and the way we made money before that path isn't as clear. Yeah. And the new path is like, well, this kind of popped off, but will it continue? And as the vaccine comes out, people are going to you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, but, you know. Pressing on in a pandemic is like, I don't think, I don't think I would have ever, and I'm a pretty ambitious guy. It, I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it was a lot. You know, and even with Brennan and them, we didn't even know Brennan and them at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And now we doggone created a company together because things are working so well. And we got dope synergy. Mm -hmm. Anything else you wanted to add there? No, I do want it to be over though, as far as like oh no, I'm traveling. I'm I'm definitely ready for the pandemic to be over. I think that enough. <laughs> I think enough. That's what I think you is enough. I will say <laughs> that one of the great things that have come out of 2020 has been therapy. Yes, I have started. I have grown. Shouts to Melissa who helped put me on to that. And bro, I'd be going to therapy. And I had my first appointment. I am not ready to share. Don't ask no questions. But if you haven't, BetterHelp is here to help you <laughs> uh, in the midst of a pandemic where you cannot go 
outside and potentially meet with a therapist in person, or you simply don't have the time to go out and meet with a person, um, a therapist in person, BetterHelp is a form of virtual teletherapy. It's really popular, quite great. I actually just recommended to my mom like last week, actually. Mm, I was there. Um, yeah, like gave her my code and everything. It was like, child, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to use. Uh, so, you know, we always say the pandemic, as much as it's also been a time for us to slow down, it's also been a time for us to check in with ourselves. And sometimes when you do that, you don't always like what's there. Oh, yeah. And being able to talk to someone about what you see, what you feel, the growth and the evolution that you're looking for is the best way to accomplish those personal life goals that you have. And BetterHelp is an option to do that. Um, they have a broad range of expertise available, which may not be available locally. For example, my therapist is actually in Portugal. <laughs> And I mean that literally. <laughs> uh, you'll have you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, so you won't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as a traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so that you can make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. And you guys know I've done that many of times the process of changing over. Uh, BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com slash love hour. Love hour. That's help H-E-L-P and join over the one million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, BetterHelp has been inundated with so many people that they're actually recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. There Special offer for Love Our Podcast listeners. You will get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash love hour. Love hour. I also want to talk to you about Skillshare. Skillshare is a sponsor for this episode. It's an amazing I was going to say, am I have uh, YouTube videos and your YouTube videos? It's an amazing place to learn how to be better. The holiday season, you can give a gift that means more. Get creative and learn how to make the perfect handmade gift, which is one of with one of Skillshare's online classes. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I, for one, have been in Skillshare. I've taken photography classes. I've taken guitar lessons. And now I'm focusing on mixing and mastering in my Skillshare learning. Why? Because I'm interested in it. Am I gonna be a professional mixer master? No, but I'm gonna learn and understand how it goes. So when I release my debut album, Thick Guys Save Lives, I'll know how to master my own music with so much to explore, real project to create, um, and the support of fellow creative Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Give a gift that's one of a kind, completely personalized or perfectly imperfect. When you put time, effort, and creativity into a gift, it shows how much you care. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshop. And now your subscription is less than $10 a month. Now you listen to this. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash LH. LH. And get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash LH. And now back to the show. All right. Uh, what were we just talking about? The Love Hour Conference. So we're done there. Yes. Uh, let's talk about, uh, we talked a little bit about keep your distance already. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happened again, where we shared with our audience in real time, unfortunately, was another celebrity death. And that was during the keep your distance show, we found out that um, Chadwick Boseman had died. That was a moment. My sister and I sit next to each other during the Keep Your Distance every show. Just we have a, our little section. Not it's not even a section. Bottle service. It's because of social distancing that it's just two seats, and those are the two seats that we always take. And so we were sitting down, and we're in the chat for the show, and all of a sudden you start seeing R.I.P. Chadwick, R.I.P. Chadwick, R.I.P. Chadwick, and I'm like. And so we're like looking at each other like, wait, Chadwick who? Like, all right, Chadwick Bose? Like, that doesn't make sense. Who knew he was sick? Like, what happened? What's going on? And then all of a sudden, Instagram is flooded with that one picture of Chadwick that was reposted over and over and over. And it's a very curious situation to be in. And I'm going to explain this real time in the moment. 
that you're at a comedy show, these comedians need to feel funny and they have an audience that they are performing in front of. And you just received this news that Chadwick Boseman died. And my sister and I literally in um, one of the vlogs, I actually think I ended up editing it out, but in real time, we're having a discussion about should we say something? Mm -hmm. Do we say something to Kevin? Do we say something to the comedians? Do we let them know what's going on? And if we do, are they going to be able to perform? Is that going to take away from the show? Is that showing respect to this man? Is it not? Are we going to want to laugh if we know this? All of these thoughts and emotions are happening in real time. And so we decide, because Kevin's like on the other side of the stage, we're like, we're not going to really say anything. I'm not going to text him, whatever. He comes over and he's like, yo, Chadwick Boseman died. <laughs> and we're like, oh, you found And it's like, of course you found out. Every comment in the live. Every like comment in the live is saying it. And if you just happen to scroll Instagram, you're going to see it. Of course. Yeah. Of course you're going to see it. It was just, again, it's just one of those moments for, you know, the few thousand people literally that are watching the show and receive this news in real time, that story again is forever intertwined with something that we were doing. Yes. I um, didn't know how much Chadwick Boseman meant to me until he passed away. I always liked him, always watched his work. I was always impressed with what amazing job he did and how he was entrusted to play so many characters that meant so much to black people, fictional or otherwise. Like mm -hmm. in some ways, Jackie Rock, listen, the Black Panther role probably meant the most to black people. And he played Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, James Brown, Zezé, Jojo didn't see none of those movies. Yeah. But for Black Panther, I I, I posted the picture we did at, um we took at, um when we saw it, remember I was on tour. We were on tour. The boys were like, you do not, not watch that, that movie without, without us. us. So we bought tickets to watch, to make sure it, we, we had a part of the opening or box office opening. And we came back and watched it with the boys and Mel and Greg. And we loved the movie, I although Isaiah I know. did not like the CGI. He did not. And he felt the fight sequences were a little lacking. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the symbolism he got. And that Halloween, all those black kids who wore what kind of stuff or and not wore... just, I mean, even back up just a moment before you got to Halloween, mm -hmm. adults were oh. dressing up for the movie. For the movie, I remember that video that went viral. That was, I don't know if it was like a flash mob, but it was like a, a black dance crew basically. Mm -hmm. And they were standing in front in the movie theater in front of the thing and yep. they did their little routine or whatever, like yep. went viral. Those are, I mean, it was a huge, huge deal and something we were proud of and something like Wakanda became, you know, it's a fictional place, but it became a, it became real in Absolutely. the sense of like what it meant. And we understood the excellence that it represented and, you know, showcasing black beauty and hair and skin and just it became something, it became real. Listen, Jay Phrygian said everyone was in dashikis in a the theater. Yes. And that's amazing. StreamYard changed the way they do comments. Did they? they yeah, they usually, oh, oh, you see it? Yeah. Um, And we were just unapologetically black during and, that time. And like, I mean, you're always like, I'm black and I'm proud, but there was something so collectively pride a yeah. collective sense of pride. Yes. Say it correctly. Uh, <laughs> that that movie brought. And I don't know, it was just something so special and so unique. And I'm not quite sure that it'll ever be duplicated. Uh, because for us, it was a first and something you're, it ain't nothing gonna compare to like what that was. No. And then fast forward and you find out about this man suffering in silence. And that I mean, it, it brings tears to my eyes thinking about. And then I also couple that with like a huge sense of like respect mm -hmm. for this man that he did it so gracefully. And he was acting while being sick for like the last four years. Listen, Actually during Black Panther, during Black Marvel. Panther. Um, and you think about him doing it. It's such a selfless act yeah. to be going through this pain. And we've watched some of this with Jason firsthand. And mm -hmm. so the thought 
of like doing these movies and you really need to be secluded and not around people because your immune system is literally brought down to like an infant yeah. level. Um, and so anyway, doing all of that and exerting all of this physical energy that you just do not have. We remember when Jason um, was going through chemo and we had Thanksgiving and he couldn't walk from like a kitchen door to the front door. Yeah. Like it was a lot of energy exerted. And to imagine doing like action sequences and all of these things. And you think, you know, he's doing this to honor and protect this idea of the Black Panther and for mm -hmm. these little kids to this fictional character that they looked up to as a superhero. And the person is going through this. I mean, it's just a lot. You and have he's to in, regard uh, him. Yeah, absolutely. He's in uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is about to come out on Netflix. And the one thing that is like heartwarming a little bit is his legacy lives on through his work. 100%. It, the Five Bloods he was amazing in. Um, it's just, you know, he and also I'm happy that he had people around him that protected him. Me too. Because in, in this in our current age of celebrity culture with Internet uh, access on steroids, it's it's really surprising that it nobody knew. And like, it was what four years, three years, four, three or four years. And Spike Lee was saying he didn't even know, you know. And I I admire the people around him. And we've met some people who were in LA who were close to him. And they he just meant so much to so many people. And that's all you can ask for your life to mean so much to people around you. So. Okay, is there anything half the other? Yes, list? the next one. There we talked about really great stuff. Yeah, I just I'm kind go of going in order. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of going in order of the year. Yeah, yeah. The next one, great thing that you don't even like that. Okay. Whoo, whoo. Are you done? Ooh! You know you don't like grapefruit. I don't understand no. why you eat it. I just thought I would. I don't even know why I have it on my plate. I feel like it's a good thing to eat. Ooh! Which, uh, that woke me up right here. I keep wanting to do this. I do that all the time now. So the other really great thing that has come out of 2020 has been The Bald and the Beautiful. Yes! It has been really, really great in real time. I think people have um, watched this friendship bud and become something that it is to watching us go out to Napa, which if you haven't watched it, you really should. It's a great you vlog. <clears throat> Joshua was in his bag in that vlog. But like, we honestly, this is something that like developed in time and it happened really truly as a result of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I think had it not been, there would always be a relation with them, yeah. but there wouldn't be this friendship where, you know, Marcus is literally like, yo, so listen, we're all, we take COVID tests all the time. We just took a COVID test. Saturday, Friday. You. Friday. And I took another one Saturday. Okay. And, and blood test for the first time. Yeah, you did. And so he's like, okay, so we're all clear. So like, since we're on break, can we like hang out that's not revolving around work, you know? And those things don't exist outside of this. And I, I think y'all got to understand, Melissa and I's first, prior to Mel moving here, we didn't really hang tough. Mm -hmm. Like we hung out with Scotty and D on Taco Tuesdays, but they worked so much and we worked so much. It wasn't, you know, Taco Tuesdays is once a quarter, once every mm -hmm. other month for a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Angel and Marcus, they remind us of our friends back in Washington. Mm -hmm. We had friends who are our age, grew up like us, similar morals, similar ch number of children. Yeah. Uh, Jojo and Marcus, Lil Marcus, are the best of friends. They're so cute together. They be hanging tough. Amar has warmed up to me. There was a couple months there. Right he out likes of me for the most part. Yeah, right out of quarantine where we... we when he was the full work Republican. Um, and, you know, they are great. Angel is an amazing otherworldly talent. Mm -hmm. I talked about this on Here's the Thing. She is very talented. Mm -hmm. She definitely holds her own, as is as funny, if not funnier than me, on podcasts. And I don't even, like, 
I don't have to be Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. be Pippen when it comes to Angel. Yeah, They both won six rings. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to do things alone. Josh has really even blossomed as a talent mm-hmm. uh, as a result of that format. And I think uh, we are building our relationship and friendship now so that when the world opens and we can do Bald and the Beautiful travel stuff, the chemistry will show. I think yeah. if anything, the thing that shows the most in the, the Bald and the Beautiful uh, content is our chemistry. Yeah. And that is the friendship that we've developed uh, during this time as well. So I am just grateful for them and for Brennan and Tony, uh, if their company. They have uh, made our stuff look so amazing. And they've allowed us to express our creative creative uh, ideas. You know, it's just like, I, I didn't expect to have my creativity expressed that that yeah. way. I mean, 2020 was starting off rough and I was like, man, it was like a just make it through. And it's like with them, I feel like a new man. Yeah. And uh, I have new possibilities and we're going to a new year. And with Manscaped, I have new balls and I shave my balls regularly. <laughs> my peen is goes into the military. It is basic training, high and tight. Pain. And you don't want to go into the new year with civil rights balls. You know, you don't want Angela Davis uh, say it loud. I'm hairy and proud. Women like shaved peens. Yes. It makes your penis look more presentable. It looks like your penis is going on a job interview, like it's wearing a top hat, a monocle, like it has great credit, like it invests in socks and bonds. It doesn't what look. You want your balls to look like? I want my balls to look like it has a 800 credit score. Yes, and a British accent. Hello, mate. It's me balls. Uh, <laughs> it's me balls, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> and Manscaped is sponsoring this episode. Make sure you need to know that I hated 2020 in March. Mm-hmm. My tour was canceled. My prospects were low. I didn't know what I was going to make. How I was going to make it through. But now with the with Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. I love 2020, especially when I shave my nutsack. Look, if you let yourself go in 2020 while in quarantine, Manscaped is here to reboot you and stay clean and shade in 2021. Give yourself and your balls a fresh start in 2021 with the Perfect Package 3.0. Has all the right tools for the job. Come out of quarantine with clean balls thanks to the Lawnmower 3.0. This is the waterproof and skin safe trimmer, which will reduce nicks to two of your best friends. The third generation trimmer even has a light to help you glow up. In- to help you get the glow up you need in 2021. <laughs> it's also time to freshen up down there this year with the Crop Preserver, which is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. Nobody wants a nasty nut sack. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting it on the smelliest part of your body? You can't get no wop with no stinking balls. That wop dries right on up when them balls are stinking. 2020 was awful. So make sure your boys are refreshed and ready for new beginnings in 2021. Look, let me show you how clean it looks. I was like, sir. All right, get 20% off plus free shipping with code LOVEHOUR at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Again, you're going to go to manscaped.com, use code LOVEHOUR and get 20% off plus free shipping. One last time, get 20% off and free shipping with code LOVEHOUR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code LOVEHOUR. Happy New Year to you and your balls. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm happy you're enjoying this. Woo! Okay. What's next? Last things. Last things. Uh, let's just talk about um, one of the big themes for the year. I think a lot of people have made this their theme for the year. And um, actually, Maddie James started reading the book and Maya, her sister, started reading the book. And then their audience started reading this book as well. And that is The B- Big, big Leap. Leap Energy by Gay Hendrix. Hendrix. And we actually were able to get him on the podcast this year, which was a phenomenal treat, to be honest. I think that book has forever changed. Man. Even our conversations are very different. Yes. I was talking to somebody, maybe it was Danny, uh, just the other day, and she mentioned something, and she immediately is like, 
is that an upper limit problem? I'm like, yeah, girl, it is. Mm -hmm. Like having that revelation just allows you to interact differently and it helps you to check yourself yeah. when you're doing things and, and you recognize like, hold on, am I self-sabotaging? Is this an upper limit problem? Like what's going on here? Why am I responding and acting this way? Yeah, I think it was the, the combination of therapy, the big leap uh, and the pandemic, I was able to make a personal leap that I needed to in my career that was necessary for what, you know, with the app and, and the notoriety and, and the eyeballs that it brought. Uh, it allowed me to be comfortable purchasing a Maserati. Mm -hmm. That's on um, here. Maserati Kev is the result Maserati of the Kev big leap. Is a result of the big leap. I was so overly concerned with what people thought about me and this and that. And the book helped me to book and therapy. It was a combination of both helped me to realize that I cannot control people's feelings about me and that I should not let their feelings or their projections or even what what they like me or hate me determine how I live my life. Um, and that was, uh, the car was a representation of that, but it wasn't like, you know, I'm buying a car to prove to you guys. It yeah. was like, I never had a nice car. Right. And I always wanted a nice car. I told you before, I don't know if I told the audience before, I used to have a dream, remember my first apartment? I had a being a first of all, this poor kid, and all the cars that I wanted are I didn't even have nothing really expensive. I had a BMW X5. Listen, BMWs I think are still expensive cars. If I were to make a dream list car, I would have a BMW on there. Yeah, I had the X5, and then all of a sudden Melissa likes the X5 now. I had a Ford. It's about F time I like something that you like because you follow me everywhere. <laughs> you, you ain't lying. Ford F-150 and a Ford Mustang. <laughs> Those are my dream cars. I'm but not I mean, laughing because that's that's still a dream. Listen, at the time of our life, it was like, man, if I could give me a Mustang, a BMW. So um, just allowing myself to uh, appreciate my life and where it's going and not be afraid and not try and self-sabotage it and not try to like, you know, like push it down or whatever. Um, it was it was a necessary part of of my growth as a person, as a actor, I was literally in the shower thinking like, I realized other people in my field have went through this. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. Tiffany Haddish, when Girl's Trip came out, sure. she was like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things sure. changed. Yvonne, when she booked Insecure, like yeah. your life doesn't go back to what it was like after that. No, no, no. And for me, it my, can't. Once your eyes are open, you can't. Yeah. And for me, I think it was different because I didn't book a big show. Right. Nothing happened like that. Yeah. It was the culmination of a lot of years of work and smart business stuff. Uh, so it's kind of hard. I feel like if I had a hit song, it'd be like, OK, this is, you know, song number one for three. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and then what's what's happening with the app now? You know, I, I told Melissa I don't have no goals for the app. And then I immediately was like 10,000. You only be lying to yourself. You knew I had a goal. Did you really? Did you know it's going to be 10,000? No, I didn't know what the number was. I want to get 86 million in Thai Disney. We're at 7600. Today when I started, when we did the here's the thing, it was it was it was before I went to bed last night it was not even 7000. Mm. And now it's closing in on 8000. But anyway, and I really do feel like this app will and I, I talk about it a lot but shoot, if you're watching this you're fans of us and it's an important thing in our life right now. But um the big leap was a necessary mindset shift to allow us to go to the next stage where God is taking yeah. us. And I think I needed the mental shift in things because I was I was upper limiting in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's also a process. It's a work in progress. Oh, exactly. If you, Absolutely. like me, if you're always not wanting compliments and all this stuff, this doesn't automatically change. But I, I've liked that our audience has been like, I, I, this is, you know, I, I I do this too because upper limiting and big leap, it's relative to your life. Absolutely. You know what I mean, because our first big leap was moving here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but our next ones weren't as clear. Yeah. So I'm super grateful for therapy, that book, you, our friend group, and our audience, man. The, the, to be honest, what was really helpful is the stage crew and, you know, their support made me realize. I don't need the whole internet to get it mm -hmm. because what really matters is people, especially people on Patreon who are like, I'm going to pay out my own money. And they were what made me be like, these people get it. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if everybody else gets it. So 
super imperative. Um, the last thing is, because I think we're just about out of time mm -hmm. here, is the Tab and Chance episode. Yeah. I think that even for Tab, the pandemic ended up being life changing for her. And that's quite literally, there's no other way to talk or to describe what's going on in her life yeah. other than it's life changing. Yeah. And that relationship built with them and it's, you know, still new and fresh, but like you can, we could call Tab right now and she would answer. Mm -hmm. But the things that have happened within her life and then in talking to them, they're super inspiring, really great people. And that episode is one of my all time <laughs> favorite episodes in all of ever. Yeah. The connection, the chemistry, the genuine vibe is something you can't manufacture. And it's only heightened by the fact or makes it even that much more special to me because we had never met in person. Yes. And like, like Charlene Sandifer said, who's our homegirl from Washington, me and Tad is the same person. Oh, yes. And you and Chance is the same person. And you being like, I'm not crazy. It is and me being like, I am crazy, but somebody out there is crazy like me. <laughs> yes, it was literally the best thing. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite episodes. And just, you know, Tab has a very natural warmth mm -hmm. to her that you feel it there in one of my vlogs. I don't even remember which one it was, but we're lit. I think it's your birthday vlog. Um, we're literally text Kev, someone, people in the comments were like, you guys need to have Tab and Chance on, you need to have Tab and Chance on. And Kev was like, okay, like, we'll figure it out. And I think you DM'd her and she was like, this is my number, call me. And we were like- She uh, FaceTimed me that day. Yeah, like, uh, okay. And like literally FaceTime and it's like on the vlog where I'm like, like this is really happening again in yeah. real time, in real life. We'd never talked to her before and literally set the date. Like, okay, like, so we're just gonna have you come on on this day. Okay, that's fine. And then they like showed up. <laughs> It was great. And it was that. freaking phenomenal. She's so safe. I mean, she, and that's the other thing is meeting people that again, have these very similar stories to you growing up as churchy as Tab did. Um, having the chitin string dynamic is kind of the same thing with Angel and, um, and Marcus. Yeah. And then I met yesterday with Yvette Henry from our, how married are you? Her and I, I'm like, we're literally the same person. Like, mm -hmm. low key, we have a lot of things in, in our stories parallel in a lot of ways. And so those type of connections are just so important. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah, Yvette Henry. Belief? What? Yeah. Oh. Um, so again, it's Girl, just. I was like, their last name ain't fatherhood. <laughs> Oh, wait. Yes. Kat, I did have Kat, uh, him on here, um, Catherine. So anyway, that's absolutely one of my favorite episodes. I love that episode. If you're listening to this and you haven't listened to that episode, you must. I get comments on that episode almost daily. And people are like, this is my third time listening. Like it just, it's a feel good. Oh, yeah episode oh, it's yeah. just genuinely a feel good episode and then to close out actually i have two things to say because someone said i need to talk about the rebrand and i actually do want to do that but before we get there to close this out this is on here and Catherine just reminded me we must talk about the imposter syndrome episode with steve on lewis mm -hmm. that episode <laughs> has changed me I, I would even argue that it's probably more impactful for me than the big leap episode, because I think I have to work through imposter stuff in order to like fully leap, even though I'm like, you know, I'm doing the leaps, you know, I'm doing the like, it's moderate if leaps. Do, yeah, if you're doing triple jump, you know, you have to do like three leaps yes. before you do the leap or maybe it's two. And then the, anyway, okay, it is three. I'm like, uh, I never actually uh, triple jump. Uh, My legs aren't long enough. Yeah. But the point is, I feel like I'm doing those, yeah. um, which is fine. It's progress. We're here for it. But I feel like um, that imposter syndrome episode was such a pivotal, impactful episode. And outside of the feel good episode of Tab and Chance, I love the rich episodes of like. I bet you do. It hit me. It did something different. Like it, it hit me in a way that I will look at the world differently moving forward. And that's one of those episodes. I don't care who you are. If you watch that episode, you have to walk away attacked. You will walk away attacked. 
but it's a good thing. It like puts a mirror up to yourself and allows you to see yourself and then adjust accordingly. 100% wholeheartedly agree. I'm not exempt. This right here is part of the imposter syndrome for me. Mm -hmm. If I'm not good at things, I quit them. Melissa knows this as, as well as anybody else. I bought a piano and played it for what? It's six weeks, if that. If that. I'd be so mad when Kev buys new stuff because I'm like, you know this is a waste of money. Today, you believe it's not. But in a few weeks, it will be. And now I'm going to be mad. Do you think I'm going to stick with this? I think so. Good. I think the, the motivation behind it is different, and that's why. Listen, I think that was imposter syndrome or big leap imposter syndrome thing for me was so much about mind sh mindset shifts. And I think um, that's why I like about the love hour. We are all growing together. Mm -hmm. The the big leap, the imposter syndrome, the episodes, they're relative to where you are in life. But we'd be going through the same thing. You know what I mean? Going through the same. Where I was at Boeing, you may be there now. Yeah. Which means you can be where I am later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because when I was at Boeing, somebody else was already here. Tim Delegato or Chantarangsu, Issa, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's what I like about our community. I feel like that's the most thing I'm thankful for. More than any other year, I feel like 2020 solidified that we actually have a community that cares. And that is so important. We don't just have fans or yeah. followers. We have a community. And, you know, it, it's just great. Um, anything else? Rebrand. Yeah, yeah. But I meant anything else on oh. Steve on. No, I want to make sure we gave that episode. It's it's just due. And if you walk away from here again and you, you know, got this far and there's anything, any two episodes that I would recommend that you go back to for this year, it would be the Tab and Chance episode and the Steve on Lewis um, and Posture sure. Syndrome episode. They're definitely worth the watch. But watch like Steve on first so you feel attacked and like <laughs> down and out and then watch Tab and Chance so you could be That's like, funny. OK. Like, I feel better and like I can do the things because uh, it's a great encouraging episode. It's a dream tracer episode. And if you're the string in the relationship, you'll feel validated. You'll feel seen. You'll feel heard like you won't feel crazy. So, yeah, it's it's, it's a really great episode. OK, the last thing that we're going to talk about today then is my rebrand. First of all, the reel you posted yesterday was amazing. I did not think that it would get the response that it did. And again, Melissa being Melissa, I'm like, we did, ended up shooting like four reels, I think. And I'm like, mm -hmm. maybe I should have posted this one first. Maybe I should have did like a build up. No, nah, man, set it off right. I'm like, I set it off right. But what if the next one isn't as great? I was like, freaking no, out. There'll always be another video to post. There'll always be another video to post. But yeah, I felt like... Um, again, doing my triple jump leaping, that it was time to take this thing serious. I remember, again, talk, when people say things to me, you never know how things hit people differently, mm -hmm. depending on where they are. And sometimes things are said to me and they linger with me and they kind of marinate for a little while. And I remember um, Angel saying, Melissa, how are you going to tell me you haven't taken this serious and you've done build 100,000 followers? <laughs> And it's really funny. But the thing is, I, st I built, it was so accidental that it happened. And I feel like now is the time that I'm like, well, if I have outside of the love hour, you know what I mean? Yeah. Outside of the love hour, that's very like curated and intentional. And like what I'm trying to get across, I feel like I think about and try to be intentional about it. Um, but like on my Instagram, I was just kind of like, it was kind of haphazard, to be honest. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think there was any intention behind it. I, I know there wasn't any intention behind it. And yeah, there wasn't true intention behind it. So now I'm just at a point where I want to do that in a way that is more, you know, intentional. Yeah. And I'm really excited about it. But I also have found that what I thought I wanted, and to be clear, I'm like low key being tongue in cheek when I'm like, look at Melissa being a whole influence because there's an image and an idea yeah. that comes to mind yeah. when you think of influencer. And while I'm, there's some serious to it, there's also like a big tongue in cheek to it. I'm kind of being funny and almost making fun of myself. And I'm okay with that. I'm not being like disrespectful to that, but like it is. 
So you go into it thinking, this is what I want and I need to have the pictures and the aesthetic. And I still like the idea of the aesthetic, but like the pictures are the thing. And I've been doing it for a couple months now. And I literally have told Kev like, I over this. <laughs> this is not what I want no more. I don't want this. I, oh, I, don't, I don't want this. And not that I want to like not still be intentional or not that I want to, um, you know, like forget all of it. I'm going to go back to what I was doing. I but I realized. Would. I wish you would go back to that regular job. Uh, that's not what I was talking about. I was like not taking my Instagram seriously. Oh. Anyways, uh, there are so many other things that I want to do and posing cute and filling my Instagram with that. No shade or disrespect, okay? Because first of all, it is a ton of work. Let's all be clear. Like what these girls and guys are doing as influencers is a lot of work. So there's no shade or disrespect. I just realized if I post one more picture <laughs> of me just looking cute, child, I'm a scream. <laughs> You started off so good and you were just like, this is boring. It is so boring. And I think it is because I have been around comedians, meaning or because Kevin, you're creative. Tony. Well, I'm sure, but I'm saying the influence is there. I'm not going to, you know, whatever. Uh, the influence yeah. of being around Kevin and Tony and Tahir and just all of these comedians all the time where they're posting video content. I'm just like, listen, these pictures. You ran out of it so quick. Listen, and I still have a ton more pictures. Yeah, look, I mean, you have the pictures. I'm talking about you ran out of the like, you were like, at first you're like, this is my stuff. I love Picture it. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It. Oh, yeah. Then you were like, I want to do something. I, I need something else. I need something else, child. I need something else. And that's where like the reels came in and um, we want to do the first impression show. Like I want to start just incorporating other things. So what I have found is this, that what I actually enjoy and the creative piece of me is that with these brand deals, I enjoy it's stressful sometimes, like don't get it twisted, but I enjoy the creative process and allowing my brain to think of things and then having a photographer or videographer bring that idea to life. When Melissa reaches her final form and fully accepts herself, she's going to be a millionaire on her own. And I'm going to be like, let me come with you to Barbados. That's great. All right. So that's it. My rebrand has been phenomenal. I've had a really great time, um, you know, doing all of these things. Um, I'm really excited for like, I appreciate the encouragement for people that are um, supportive of the rebrand. And I especially love seeing other people be so inspired that they do it themselves. Mm -hmm. That's really what my favorite thing is. Yes. So that's great. Last thing I want to say is people are asking me what my shirt says. It is my first draft of I am the reason and the occasion. You guys can let me know what you think of it. Came out great. You think so? I do. You guys can let me know. Melissa comes up with these ideas too. Uh, I'm so glad we're past you saying you're not creative. Yeah, we're done over. But I don't know. I'm how not going to take it into this. Now that you've accepted, I'm not going to take it into 2021. I'm trying to show them. I don't think I. I'm still on the fence about it. It's giving me a vibe that I'm not quite sure that I want. Uh. Yeah, I haven't been able to fully articulate it. So, so anyway, thank you guys so much. This was actually kind of a longer episode, but thank you guys so much. I actually really enjoyed doing a, a look back at 2020, mm -hmm. the year that was, uh, and looking into looking forward into 2021 and what it will be. And um, that's it. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you at the conference. Bye. Bye.